Hey everyone, what's going on? So tonight I'm going to be talking about the Pendulum Magician FTK. Um, you guys may have noticed a couple of weeks ago I released a video on the Pendulum Magicians post-February ban list. Um, no one really knew what the FTK was back then, so I'm making an updated list. Plus I'm going to be talking about how this FTK is going to affect the game. So, um, what the FTK really is, is kind of just opening Dark Worm, and if your opponent doesn't have any hand trap or interruption for the whole turn, you're just going to immediately win. Um, so how the deck works is you're gonna get Dark Worm, and Dark Worm, it adds, uh, Supreme King Gate 0, and you're just gonna get a bunch of, you're gonna get your scales off, you're gonna get, um, Electromite, and all that stuff, um, so, recently the FTK deck was in the top 16 at YCS Atlanta, and um, there was a lot of discussion about it when people first realized how good it was. I think no one really was talking about it pre-YCS Atlanta, because no one was really sure how good this FTK was or how consistent it was. Like, a lot of people still knew it existed because it had been on, like, YouTube previously when it um electromite was first revealed and people were like testing it out on uh like why joe pro and all that stuff <laughs> but no one really knew how good it was going to be in an actual competition and the reason for that is ftks usually aren't consistent and relies on like a handful of very specific unsearchable cards so people we're thinking this might not be effective and it's not really anything to discuss. Just play the standard magicians where you're making decode vortex and either number 38 or Narito. So that was the considerable best play to make until people knew about this FTK it was actually really good. And really, there's only a few minor changes you need to make to the Pendle Magician deck to get this FTK going. And what makes the FTK even better is you're still playing the best deck in the format. So the reason that that it's like not only an FTK, but also you're playing the best deck in the format is because you're only taking out a couple pieces of the original build. Like for me, I went from three Wisdom Eyes to I think one or two. I took out an Oaf and I took out a Time Graph. And now I'm playing an FTK, and I'm also playing the best deck of the format. Um, I recently played this deck at a Locals as well, and it was very hard for anyone to do anything against it if they didn't have any response, because if they had no response, they were losing right there. That was game one, is me opening Dark Worm, and I just win. Um, and recently I noticed that on Zodiac Duelist, uh, another YouTuber by the name of Simo posted a poll asking how people feel about FTKs in the game, and I believe this the total percentage was 90% of everyone who voted said no, that FTKs are not good for the game. FTKs are very disgusting, but they're not good for the game. Um, so, basically what's happening here is... Electromite, instead of taking Astrograph, is going to put this guy in here. And what he does, this card's basically your searcher for your Instant Fusion. And you can either open with Instant Fusion, or open with Dark Worm. Or you can open with Dragon Shrine, open with Foolish Burial, and you have the FTK. That's ridiculous. Um, there's four different cards that you can open, Dark Worm being three of. Instant Fusion, I run it at 2, but I've seen it also run at 3. Uh, you can run 2 two or 1 Dragon Shrine, or you can just run 1 Dragon Shrine, 1 Foolish Burial like I do. Um, and there's just so much that the deck can do. You, there's so many different ways that you can just open with this FDK. Um, one thing that I've noticed, though, when I was testing out the FDK is if you don't open up with a high scale, you shouldn't go for the FTK, because at that point you're chancing it on that you're going to draw a high scale off of 
Electromite, probably. If you can get to Electromite. Um, that's another thing. If you can't get to Electromite, then you're definitely not getting the FTK. Um, <clears throat> but the reason that FTKs are so broken is people are paying to play into this game. People are paying to go to tournaments, all that. And one is they're losing before they even get a chance to do anything. And two, they're basically losing money because they just paid all this money to get into a tournament and they literally don't even get to play. Um, because with FTKs, if you lose the dice roll, you essentially lose your first game in that match. And then what can happen from there is you can beat them in game two and they can choose to go first again and FTK you again. If you don't open Interruption, you just automatically lose to this deck. If you do open Interruption, then you're still playing against the best deck in the format. Um, that's really what it boils down to. And what's really interesting is Konami usually gets these kind of things out of the way before they can even happen. Like, previously there, there was the Kaiser Coliseum that was banned, and no one was really sure why. But what it boiled down to was there was a super, super gimmicky combo with um, Destiny, Destiny Hero Dark Angel, where you basically prevent your opponent from being able to use monster effects, spells, traps, and you're putting down a monster that couldn't be short of a battle, if I remember correctly. Um, so you pretty much just lock your opponent out of the game. And like I said before, it was super janky, but Konami and Kaiser Coliseum to prevent people from being able to do it. Um, and then there's a more recent one with the Tyrant Neptune that basically does this exact same FTK. Or, well, it wasn't an FTK, but it was a play where you're basically forcing your opponent to have to win on their turn, or you were going to beat them on your next turn. Um, basically, Tyrant Neptune effect it would um, copy independent nightingale burn your opponent for 5,000 and this thing wasn't affected by monster effects if they can get over tyrant neptune on their next turn they just flat out lost and like i just mentioned before that's another janky combo that's just like it's super inconsistent and you sh wouldn't take it to a competition expecting good results um because it's just way too inconsistent but what's very surprising with this one is this is a very consistent FTK, and people have been saying, why isn't this hit yet? Um, why wasn't this hit preemptively? What I think is Konami actually didn't notice it, and it did actually go under the radar. Because um, like I mentioned before, people weren't sure how good it was, so it might have not have gotten as much discussion as things like Dark Angel and Neptune did. And the reason for that is like when, there, when there's like a janky combo like Tyrant, Neptune, or the Kaiser Coliseum lock, people will just talk about it just because like it kind of get, gets hyped up. But since this one wasn't um, some super janky combo, it was actually an option in one of the best decks in, in the format, people weren't really talking about it. It was like, why would you do that when you can just play the deck? Why would you want to do an FTK? Because everyone, as everyone knows, FTKs must all be janky and bad. So it kind of went under the radar for players as well as Konami because people have just accepted FTKs are bad and you'll never really have to deal with them. Um, now here we are with a actually very playable combo. And it just can't be, can't be allowed to continue. That's my opinion on this FTK, is FTKs in general can't be allowed to continue. Um, it's pretty ridiculous. But um, that's my opinion on the FTK. Well, that's my opinion on FTKs in general, is no, they cannot be allowed, and they should be dealt with. Um, I feel this one has gone under the radar and got messed up because Konami might have not noticed it. People didn't talk about enough for Konami to notice it, but um, that's how I feel about it. If you guys have a different opinion, let me know in the comments. I've heard people say 
I've heard a very small percent of people say that should be allowed because if you don't open up a hand trap, then you you basically set yourself up to lose. And that's not particularly true because your opening hand really does boil down to luck. Um, that's really how it is. You have a, I believe it's 3% chance of opening any card. So no matter how many hand traps you're playing, that's about a 9% chance of opening any three of that you have. So if you have a 9% chance of opening up a hand trap, you might not see them every single game like you would expect because you only have a 9% chance. Um, like I said, if you don't open interruption, you just automatically lose, and that's not right. You paid into this game. You shouldn't. You should get a turn to play the game. Um, like I said, that's my opinion on how F and the FTKs in general. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And while you're down there, check out the description for all the Garo Gaming media, so you guys can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and join the Discord. See you guys next time.